Hello, um, I'm David. And I'm Lydia. And this is Merlin, and this is our house, 62 something road in Lansing. We've owned this house, house for around about seven years now, and, and when we first moved in, it was very much a house that needed a lot of care and attention. It was um, rather run down. So we've transformed it into uh, an eco home and have made a lot of improvements and, um, and savings in terms of um, solar panels, rainwater um, collection, um, growing our own food. Um, and um, our insulation etc so we've made quite a few changes which we'll take you around now. So welcome to our wonderfully chaotic front garden which comes with a bit of a story. When we bought the house it was entirely block paved and devoid of any life whatsoever so we took up those paving slabs and um, reused them in the brickwork we, we used all the hardcore and all the sand and we've created this little oasis for um, growing mainly food and, and veg. So hidden in amongst all of this, we've got tomatoes, fennel, strawberries, gooseberries, black currants, rhubarb, my herb garden there, and lots of exotic things like fennel and fissilis. That's asparagus. And asparagus. This is asparagus. Thank you, husband. <laughs> there we go. Um, but more importantly as well, we've now welcomed back a whole load of other little critters, my favourite thing. So we've now got frogs back. They did not like the block paving. We've seen lizards. We've got damselflies. We've got all kinds of stuff and um, some very, very happy fish in our water feature. Uh, so it's important for us to have a really nice front garden. I'm a landscape architect by profession, so you know, gardening for me is something really, really, really um, important. So uh, we thought that here in the front garden, we would uh, think about you know, growing our own food as well as our, our flowers, etc. So we have got a rain garden. So this is in fact, uh, all the way along here, under by the stone, is a pond. It's got fish in it uh, and water lilies, etc. to fill the water quality and the water is all fed by the roofs of our house. So, water comes down by the pipes into this area here. It also brings water from the back garden as well, from the roofs in the back, and it all comes into this, this system, basically, where we have fish and other animals, and we use this water to water our front garden so we don't have to bring a hose um, into here. We've got all the water we need throughout the year. So as you can see, we've got a lovely back garden and we've taken NOMO 2021 to quite some extreme, um, which has paid dividends in terms of all the biodiversity in here. Um, you can also see that we've got uh, a number of apple trees and none of that goes to waste. Uh, you know, apple pies are plenty, but mainly cider, let's face it. If you can't live the good life, then what can you do? Um, so this entire garden has been planted up um, to feed birds, bees and critters and indeed ourselves. So there's lots of um, fruit and veg hidden away as well as the interest of the plants. We were lucky enough to be selected for Adrian Worthing's hot bin trial. So we've got one of these big boys taking all our food waste and including cat litter and um, meat etc etc all in moderation as well as a whole load of um, uh, shredded paper so really interesting trial um, it's working well not necessarily completely sort of up to temperature um, but seems to be producing vast quantities of baby bio at the moment so um, who knows what the future will bring for it So this is the only Tesla we could actually afford, um, but it's our Mark I um, Powerwall battery, so it stores six and a half kilowatt hours of energy. And thanks to all the other improvement works that we've done about the house, this gives us around about 24 hours of off-grid resilience. 
So um, working it out with our panels, actually we've used more electricity that's been stored in the battery than we have directly from our solar panels and it counts for about 62% of our own production of energy. So um, has paid us dividends simply because we were at the tail end of the feed-in tariff and weren't making the mega bucks that uh, everyone else seems to have done. Um, so it's working really, really well for us. And um, along with this kind of kit and now um, our EV car, uh, for every one of us that's uh, a fellow geek like me, you can track every single movement of every single bit of current on a variety of apps and, um, and, and really enjoy the smug feeling that you get of producing your own energy and not having to spend any money with the big six. Uh, so this is the newest addition to our collection of stuff. Um, our last car obligingly died and we promised ourselves that we would go electric as soon as that happened. So, um, so goodbye Vauxhall Vectra 1.8 litre engine. Hello Hyundai Kona, 64 kilowatt hour battery, range 280 miles, absolutely fantastic investment, very happy with it. We've only had it three weeks so absolutely. still very keen. Exactly, uh, and so uh, we have only just had this uh, put on this week. This is the wall charger, it's a Zappy, so it talks to our solar panels and um, other storage, for example, and balances out. So when we have an excess of charge, the Zappy puts it into the car rather than sending it out to the grid. So we are, you know, our car now runs on sunbeams, which is a very satisfying um, experience for really.